This is typical Candillo food. We have plantain, it's soft and kind of sweet. We've got a potato, there's yuca. Here is a roast beef and this delicious sauce. And here is just a pork chop. It's not, it's fish. Oh, it's fish? Oh. What kind of fish? Just fish. Just fish. So sometimes I just order off the menu, not knowing what what I'm going to end up with. Today I ordered, and I got these, it was one order, but it's these two giant, good size pork hocks, cooked all tender, and it comes with, comes with this bean casserole, and I'll put the uh, Spanish name up on the screen for you and it looks basically it's kind of like um, bean soup chili without the spice and how much uh, delivered 25,000 so seven dollars and something certainly can serve two people easily so I guess I'll have it for lunch and dinner so it occurred to me as I've been doing these videos uh, that I didn't provide any background. Uh, so far in Candillo, the department of Candillo, we've gone to Armenia, uh, Calarca, or Carlarca, uh, Finlandia, Salento, Kimbaya, Buena Vista, and Pijao. Uh, what's left in Candillo? La Tabaida, Montenegro, Hanova. Circassia, Cordova. There's five left. But what is a Candillo? Well, Candillo is made up of 12 municipalities. We visited seven. Those towns are part of a greater municipality. So it's the town plus the, the land surrounding it. We visited seven. We've got five left to do. Candillo is a department. Now, what is a department? It's, it's like a state. So the United States is made up of 50 states, and it has some protectorates, and, but we're going to talk about the states. Colombia is also a constitutional republic, and it's made up of 32 departments, or 32 states. The smallest of which is San Andreas and Providencia. Those are islands. They're islands about, as I recall, about 100 miles south of Jamaica, uh, they're closer to Panama than they are to Colombia, but Colombia owns those islands. And I spent about, as I, I think about 10 days in San Andreas. It's an amazing place, a very popular vacation spot, uh, particularly, I don't know why, but in particularly with Canadians. It's very inexpensive as compared to other places in the Caribbean, as compared to Jamaica, uh, but it's just it's just this gorgeous. Uh, the people there are made up of uh, primarily black descendant like Jamaica, and they speak island English, which is the same as Jamaica. Of course, there's a lot of Colombians that live there now. But you know, look it up. If you ever get a chance, go you know go spend a week or two there. Maybe one day we'll go do videos there. So. Those are the smallest. The next smallest in land size is Candillo. And of course, the capital of Candillo department is Armenia. Now in all of Candillo, all of these towns we went to in Armenia where I'm living, the total population is about 600,000, extrapolated from the last census. Uh, so showing about the same growth as previously. So it's about 600,000. Over half of those live in the city of Armenia itself. 
So while Armenia is a very small city, it's a big fish in a little pond. Now, Candillo is the most densely populated, as say, people per square meter. After San Andreas and Providencia Islands, which those are one department, and Atlantic, where you, it's up on the coast. Um, so I mentioned many times about Candillo being a, a coffee country. So there's other coffee departments other than Candillo. You've got Rizeralda, uh, that's where Pareda is located. You've got Caldas, that's where Manizales is located, and Tolima, where Ibague is. And I've done videos on all of those. I've lived in Pareda, I've lived in Manizales. And if you watch this channel, you know that recently I spent a couple days in Ibague. This area, these four departments, Rizeralda, Caldas, Tolima, and Candillo, it's known as the coffee access or the coffee triangle. Now, coffee is grown in other areas, but nothing like in this triangle. This is this is the hub. This is the main location for coffee. This is where all the... I'm not saying there's not some good coffees in other areas, but the, really, the ones of, of note, of special note, are located in this region. Now, Candillo is considered to be Andean rainforest. And it's been pointed out by many people that, yeah, we get a fair amount of rain. And I'm always, you know, kind of downplaying it because most of that rain comes uh, later in the day or in the evening. So it's not like you have a lot of overcast days. You have sunny days, even though you may get some rain. Now, just to mention for the, the coffee triangle itself... In 2011, UNESCO uh, designated the Coffee Triangle on the World Heritage List. So it's kind of a big to-do. The people of this region are co called Paisas. Now, it's not only the Coffee Triangle. It, it blends into other areas. But it's, the, its core is, is here in the Coffee Triangle. Now, what's a Paisa? The name it actually it describes country mountain people, and they have kind of a unique language and pronunciation as compared to other areas of Colombia. So, but it's it's more than just a country folk. It's it, it's this entire heritage that they have, because it really goes back from the origin from the indigenous tribes. So there were four indigenous tribes in total. The big one being Kimbaya, and I talked about that in the Kimbaya video. But you also have Tahamias, Nutabes, and Katios. The designation of Paisa originated from the people from those tribes, even though they vanished prior to the you know the more recent population. They didn't completely vanish. They're just off the map historically. You know, but there's still people that would intermingle and you know carry some of these traits. So when you hear the term Paisa, that's really what they're talking about. Now you can have Paisas down in Medellin or up in Medellin. It's north of here. Uh, but the core of it is in this coffee triangle. I was just recently asked, and since I'm talking about Candillo, I'll, I'll mention it, uh, what's the ethnic makeup? And I was asked in a way of, are there problems basically, you know, if you're black? And, and no, and I've mentioned many times in, in videos that in Colombia, it's, it's a non-issue. And I'll describe, here's what the makeup is. 97.9% .9 of Candillo is mestizo or white now what is mestizo it's a mixed race and that's the majority of the makeup now originally mestizo meant spanish and indigenous so you know a spaniard would grab this you know this hot indian chick and they would get married and have kids and now the spanish 
created this designation of mestizo because they were big on the caste system. And this was around the 1600s. So this designation was used in their caste designation. Essentially, if you were pure blood Spanish, you were at the top of the heap. But if you were mestizo, you were a step down. And that meant you weren't eligible for certain rights with ownership, uh, various things in the Spanish law. And then at the bottom rung, you had indigenous. And then there's a few other categories thrown in there. And this actually contributed, it wasn't the sole reason, but it contributed to the overthrow of Spain. It's uh, one of the big reasons places like Colombia just were fed up with them. So while it originally meant Spanish and indigenous, today, now, it's really used as any mixed race. It can be white and black, it can be indigenous and, and white, it can be uh, mixture and mixture. <laughs> it, 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 basically, it could be anything. You know, French and Philippine, it, it can be anything. Any mixed race now is the way the term is generally used. Technically, you know, you can go back to the origin, but if it's not used that way, then that's really not what it means anymore. So you have the the mixed race and white of 97.9%. And that kind of says it all when it comes to that question. Now, just strictly black population is about 2.5%. And indigenous, it's 0.4%. And the reason it's so low is because the indigenous, as I mentioned in another video, had, had pretty much been erased or evaporated from this area long before it was officially settled. And in some cases, before the Spanish even arrived. So it wasn't all to do with the Spanish coming, and it wasn't that they were all wiped out by disease. It, it's not the same story as you'll get in the Caribbean or in Mexico or even in Ecuador. This is a, this is a different, different story, and unfortunately much of it is lost to history. So there's not a whole lot of indigenous population here, but not uh, you know, from any uh, untoward reasons it's just because they just stopped living here for one reason or another hundreds and hundreds of years ago and when the uh, people came in and settled these different areas uh, around the turn of the century of 1900s late 1800s early 1900s that's when these areas were all settled There was really nobody living here at the time. It was just it was just empty land. So that's my quick lesson on Candillo. I hope that gives you per some perspective uh, of what it's all about, what the makeup is, and you can think about that as we go on our journey to visit some other places, and then at some point expand to some of the areas around Candillo. So with that. I'll see you next time.
malédiction. Oh no. Oh no. Once días. Ahora no. Once días. Oh, Marisol? Or no? Okay, it's uh, Entrada.